Well, uh, the Secretary General of uh, the United Nations issued uh, a decision uh, appointing Ambassador Mohammed Idris, uh, the former representative of uh, Egypt to the United Nations uh, in New York, as uh, a member of uh, the advisory group uh, of the United Nations uh, Peace Building Fund for a period of two years. The, uh, the selection of uh, Ambassador uh, Mohammed uh, Idris uh, is a, a culmination of his uh, efforts during Egypt's uh, presidency of the United Nations uh, Peace Building uh, Commission last year and an affirmation of uh, Egypt's uh, leadership in enhancing uh, the effectiveness of the United Nations peace building uh, structure since its establishment in the year 2005 as according uh, to the General Assembly resolution establishing uh, the uh, Peace Building Fund, the Secretary General of the United Nations chooses appointment uh, of uh, 10 members of uh, the consultative uh, group from nominees uh, of uh, member uh, states uh, who have uh, the required experience in the field of peace building. It is worth noting uh, that this uh, is uh, the fourth time that the Egyptian uh, is a member uh, and Egyptian is a member uh, of uh, the advisory committee uh, of the United Nations uh, Peace Building Fund representing uh, African countries. Uh, to shed more light on this, we have the pleasure to have uh, this uh, phone with Ambassador uh, Mohammed Idris, uh, member of uh, advisory group of UN uh, Peace Building Fund. Good afternoon, uh, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be with you and your distinguished. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Uh, first, we would like to congratulate you for uh, the new uh, post and uh, uh, give us uh, your insight and how do you feel concerning this uh, new post. Thank you very much. Actually, regardless of my modest personality, uh, the, the credit goes to our great country and goes to the Egyptian Foreign Ministry, which is deeply rooted uh, in, uh, diplomat in diplomacy and uh, uh, has deeply rooted a, a, a distinguished uh, excellent in diplomacy. So I think the credit goes to uh, our country and our foreign ministry. Uh, that's frankly uh, this consultative group or its advisory group, the Secretary General, uh, was uh, created uh, by GA General Assembly Resolution. Uh, and uh, maybe, uh, as uh, I, uh, I, I recall with our uh, viewers, that in 2005, uh, the 15th, mem 15th member of the establishment of the UN member states uh, decided to create and establish new bodies. One of them was the Human Rights Council, another was the uh, Peace Building Commission. The Peace Building Commission also, there was another resolution, created Peace Building Fund to, uh, to fund the activities of the Peace Building Commission. And this fund is governed and administered by this advisory group to the Secretary General of the United Nations, yes. which I am honored to be a member of for the next two years. Yes, sir. Your Excellency Ambassador Idris, uh, uh, what is the role of the United Nations uh, Peace Building Fund? Quite frankly, uh, you know, uh, for, for quite some time, the UN was more uh, engaged in peacekeeping missions. And uh, it transpired that peacekeeping missions alone uh, do not fulfill the job because if you just send troops to a uh, stabilized the situation, then the country which is emerging from conflict will need to be a functioning state, which means you have to create uh, an, uh, institutions, you have to establish functioning institutions in the country and rehabilitate the, uh, the country to be able to administer its activities by its own. You can send troops and stay forever. And this was one of the criticisms directed to the peacekeeping missions of the UN that troops are sent and staying forever without the country being able to uh, refunction yes. and to be a functioning state. So the peacekeeping concept is to create and help countries who are emerging from conflict and youth to be able to create a, a institutions, to be able to be functioning on its own and allowing the peacekeeping missions to uh, be passed. And to do this, of course, you need to fund these peacekeeping activities. And this uh, fund, which is the uh, Peace Building Fund, is uh, mandated to, uh, to support these peacekeeping uh, activities of the United Nations. 
to uh, set the priority, to uh, set, uh, of course, this fund that, uh, uh, operates on the basis of respecting national ownership. It does not impose, it does not create conditionality, but it just helps the country to implement its own national plans. Yes. And then you have to set the priorities, you have to see uh, which countries are in more need, uh, you have to uh, see what are the resources of the fund and how to uh, increase it. So this is the uh, this government of the fund is the mandate of this consult or advisory group of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Yes, uh, so Your Excellency Ambassador Idris, uh, what is the importance of uh, choosing Egypt as uh, a member of the Funds Advisory uh, Board uh, for the fourth time? Of course, it's a credit to, the, uh, to, the Egypt, to Egypt as a great country and important country in Africa. It's a credit to the Egyptian Foreign Ministry, uh, which I mentioned has deeply uh, rooted traditions in diplomatic excellence. And uh, it is also important because most of the activities of the Pacific are in Africa, which is our continent, and uh, we are uh, so much engaged through also the African Union and through our national policies in supporting the peace-building activities in Africa. So also promoting the work of the UN in peace-building in our uh, continent, Africa, is uh, a matter of Egyptian national priority and Egyptian national interest. So it's important that Egypt is engaged, and I have to say that since the establishment of the Peace Building Commission, Egypt was so much actively engaged and so much crucial in the work of the Peace Building Commission. And I have to say that uh, recently, Egypt was last year, Egypt was the, uh, uh, the president of the Peace Building Commission, yes. and I was honored personally to be the president until I ended my tenure in New York, and then my colleague uh, replaced me, Ambassador Osama Abdelhadi continue the job efficiently, and so uh, we are so much engaged in these activities in Africa, and as I mentioned, these uh, activities represent uh, priority to Egypt and uh, a matter of national interest to Egypt. Yes, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Idris, uh, this shows uh, that Egypt, uh, uh, choosing Egypt uh, uh, means that Egypt was very successful in this uh, uh, post. Uh, so what did uh, Egypt uh, offer during uh, the post last year? as uh, the United Nations uh, uh, Peace Building uh, Commission member. Uh, of course, I have to say that, uh, and with the testimony of the members of the United Nations, uh, that Egyptian presidency, the Peace Building Commission, was one of the most successful uh, presidencies. Uh, it, it helped lots of African countries to pursue its national policies. It, uh, it promoted respecting the national priorities. As I mentioned, uh, the uh, fund should not put plans and impose it on countries, but respect the national priorities and national plans and national ownership of the countries. So it was instrumental in this. At the same time, promoting the role of developmental activities. It is important also to create functioning uh, developmental uh, states uh, in Africa in order to be able to pursue and continue uh, the way forward after the peacekeeping mission uh, and its mandate. Uh, promoting the role of women and the role of youth. This was also an uh, important uh, priority for the Egyptian president. At the same time, uh, 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 promoting, creating new funds and increasing the, uh, the, 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 the pool of funds to the peace-building uh, funds. This is important and this is one of the challenges because so far the uh, funding of uh, these uh, activities depends on voluntary contributions from member states, and this uh, makes a challenge because you have a lot of demand, and uh, as you see, world healing and the world development are creating lots of demand and lots of pressure on the uh, countries who are in a position to provide voluntary contributions to these activities. So it's important to create new innovative methods and new creative methods to uh, replenish the funds of the peace building fund and to have these uh, resources available to uh, help countries, which, as I mentioned, most of them are in the African countries. So uh, yes. that was uh, among the priorities. Also, uh, other priorities like climate change, like the, uh, uh, the, 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 and, and the impact of climate change, uh, these also were, uh, were uh, creating partnerships. This was important in the different presidencies, create partnerships 
whether public private partnerships or partnerships with the private sector in order to uh, secure more resources for the peace building funds and peace building activities in the United Nations. Yes, uh, so what do we uh, expect uh, in uh, this year, uh, Your Excellency, what do we expect uh, ye this uh, year uh, from appointing Egypt a member of the uh, advisory uh, group of uh, the United Nations uh, Peace Building Fund? Uh, personally, of course, uh, we will continue our vision and the plan because, uh, as I mentioned, we are stakeholders in this endeavor. Uh, the most of the activities of the peace building are in Africa. So Africa has uh, a lot of uh, a lots of uh, interest in promoting the work of the peace building commission and peace building fund. Of course, we will continue. For, as, as you mentioned in the introduction uh, of this program, this advisory uh, group is uh, composed of ten uh, members from uh, different regions and from also. Uh, uh, it's uh, also a uh, gender uh, balanced uh, body. Uh, and uh, of course, from uh, our side, we represent, of course, the vision of Africa, the priorities of Africa, and the interest of Africa in uh, the work of the peace building fund. We will try to, of course, uh, deal with the challenges which are, are created by the current scene. Uh, current international developments in the world scene. Of course, lots of developments are unfolding and this is creating lots of challenges uh, for the peace uh, building activities. We have to deal with it, we have to create new uh, resources, we have to create new innovative, creative solutions uh, to meet these uh, surmounting challenges. Uh, of course, we will cooperate with the different members of the advisory uh, group in order to uh, promote uh, these tasks and, of course, in order to make the interest and the priorities of the African continent uh, in the fore and uh, give it a due uh, importance and the due uh, high interest on the agenda of the Peace Building Fund and the Peace Building Commission. Yes, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador uh, Idris, uh, how do you see Egypt's uh, stance and role in uh, the maintaining uh, peace in the Middle East? Uh, you know, the Egyptian, one of the important pillars of the Egyptian yes. foreign policy is peace and development. We are a country which, uh, whether it's in our direct neighborhood uh, in the Middle East or in our uh, uh, wider continent in Africa, we have been always uh, supportive of creating peace from an objective point of view, which means creating the conducive circumstances, uh, taking consideration that peace and development are, uh, are, have, lot, have there is an important nexus between peace and development. We cannot have peace without development and we have to develop without peace. So we are, uh, in our approach, we are keen to give due attention to both pillars, to create development in order to be, uh, create conducive situations and conducive circumstances uh, for peace, and at the same time to try to always play a role of reconciliation, building common grounds, bridging gaps, and trying to get uh, uh, to contain uh, any conflict in our region or in our continent and try to find uh, peaceful outcomes and peaceful solutions. And uh, of course, these challenges are increasing. And, and you see now, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, development in the world now, the current world is so much interconnected and interdependent. Whatever happens in one part of the world puts pressure on uh, different parts. So we see now the development in the world is creating uh, develop, uh, uh, pressure uh, developmental and uh, pressure in Africa and at the same time consequently creating also uh, pressure on the uh, fabric of peace and security in Africa. So this means we have to uh, do extra effort and we have to do to find more ways and means. We, of course, in, 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 uh, I have to mention that also this is what instrumental in creating the uh, center for uh, post-conflict construction. This is an African Union center, an Egyptian idea, promoted in the African Union, adopted by the African Union, and this center is now established, and it is, uh, uh, located, it, it is located in Egypt. Yes. And uh, that was an Egyptian initiative at the beginning. Yes. Uh, at the same time, they formulated the African uh, policy for post-conflict development and construction that was an also important Egyptian endeavor. And of course, we always try to integrate 
the Egyptian policy with the UN policy and we try to uh, promote the, the, uh, the African views. I mean, and we have always tried to promote the African views with the, uh, within the UN and try to uh, 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 promote African priorities and African interests within the policies of the nations uh, in the domain of peace uh, keeping and domain of peace building. And this, of course, uh, is a big challenge, but uh, I think we have a good record in uh, fulfilling this important task and uh, meeting these important challenges. Yes, uh, I thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you for your valuable information, information uh, and uh, congratulations, Ambassador Mohammed Idris, member of uh, advisory group of uh, the UN Peace Building Fund. It was really an honor to have you with us over the phone. Well, uh, with this, uh, my dear viewers, we come to the end of this episode of our program, Cairo Local Time. My name is Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.